all of us will have a mixed judgment of whether the evolution really succeeded or are we doing well or are we not doing well. You know, Mr. Speaker, the evolution is not an experiment. It is the reality of our time. So as industry players, MCAs and in in Senate, we can never afford to let the evolution fail. Because this is not an experiment. It is already in the Constitution. So if you are any of the organs charged with devolution, your mandate is to ensure that devolution succeeds. And devolution was actually a revolution, our own little form of revolution without necessarily a violent revolution. When you talk about devolution, it tried to create structures to the very bottom of our society. It tells you you need somebody called a ward rep, a village rep, and many of these things. These are not supposed to be cronies of the governors, they were supposed to take down devolution as a promise of our time. They were supposed to relate back the aspiration and relay back the policy orientation. I get what you see these days, everybody is trying to fit in their, their biggest, uh, you know, uh, crony uh, as a ward rep and these villagers and uh, these people at the ward rep level think now they have become bosses unto us. The only thing they are short of is to have an escort. So what happens, the evolution has become fairly also a nuisance to people. Not because the evolution is a bad idea, but even the way Kinudia Mwangi, the way you started the evolution, translated our governors into some kind of feudal chiefs. It made our governors to be the colonial governors of the yesteryears and provincial commissioners. <laughs> the evolution was about the national cake how it was, how we divided the national cake and how we grew the national cake. Governors, most governors treat the evolution as a big CDF. And then you show your magnanimity by launching a toilet and a footbridge. <laughs> it is shameful in Kenya for us to demonstrate our failures. Social justice was a promise at the advent of independence. 50 years on, we are still launching toilets for our people. We have not even achieved the ends of sanitation. Our people live in filth when governors and cronies and people even in our levels live in almost immoral opulence. You go with a whole array of busybodies. You go with a whole array of busybodies advisors and everybody to officiate and preside over a small function. The cost of the function itself could actually do another project. Kwa hivo. Kwa hivo. Kwa hivo. Kwa hivo. Kwa hivo devolution. Kwa hivo devolution was about equity. Devolution was about equity. Devolution was about social justice. Devolution was about the ordinary people. Devolution was about Article 174. But devolution was never about exclusion. Devolution was about the promise of a better Kenya. Devolution was to suppose to achieve social justice. Devolution was about to achieve equity. Devolution was about giving meaningful progress to the most disenfranchised of our society. That was what devolution was about. It was never about creating new feudal chiefs within our lives. And devolution does not talk about, about equality, it talks about equity. It talks about social justice. And the social justice phenomenon is one of the most radical phenomena in our lives. Social justice means those who are worse off must be better off before those who are better off become well off. Kwa hivo, there is no way we can audit devolution without, without auditing the conduct of those who must preside over devolution. You cannot talk about devolution without talking about the governors. You cannot talk about devolution without talking about the senators. 
You cannot talk about devolution without talking about members of the county assembly. And if we have made mistakes, we must own those mistakes. Even us, I've spoken many times, speaker in the Senate. I believe the Senate ought to have done more, much in the same way the members of county assembly need to have done more in the oversight role of the county governments. Kwaivo, as we come to this conference, let us honestly and objectively interrogate the issues around devolution. Let us make sure, and I want to end this by saying this, especially to the members of the media, you make the position of an MCA so inconsequential, you always continue to discredit the institution of the MCA. You try every other time to make it appear like MCAs are unworthy of those positions, overpaid and yet underachieved. There are MCAs in this country who are more learned than people in parliament. And the intention, the intention of devolution was to ensure that we have MCAs who are competent to be legislators in the same way we have legislators in the national parliament. And that's why when I see, I see some of these uh, people talking about senators seeking different positions, they make it appear like it is criminal for a senator to seek an MCA position. It is not. They talk about senators who are becoming MCAs. Why are you not talking about senators who are about to become president like Wetangula? <laughs> because there are all sorts of senators. So for me, it is for, we must have a resolution of this conference to ensure that this position of an MCA is, is revered, it is celebrated, both in terms of its ability to execute its function and its respect in the society. So MCAs, some of you might be seeking higher office. This might be our last time we're in this forum together in this format. So as you go into your election period, make sure that you cement the vision for the future. Take stock of what your county assemblies have done. Those who get re-elected, improve them. Those who seek other positions, help to improve the MCA. Those who become senators, ensure you empower MCAs. And all institutions must work to ensure that this country is set on the path of the devolution, revolution. Wale watu wale kuwa na haikol mimi, mimi siyo gopi heckling. Where?